name is Shankari Balendra. I am the program coordinator for Aurora House. And uh, uh, Aurora House has been in the human trafficking field, helping survivors of human trafficking to get on with their lives, uh, to move forward. And we have been there in the, in the field for the past more than two years, helping survivors of human trafficking to change their life, to transform their life. Uh, human trafficking happens when there is vulnerability, uh, ex exploitation of vulnerable population. And as we know, when someone is vulnerable, they will, they will become exploited due to economical reasons, uh, due to uh, social and emotional support. So people who are vulnerable to these are affected. And also, this vulnerability does not impact only one community. And there is no difference when it comes to gender, male, female, culture, religion, race, country of origin. Anything is not connected to the vulnerability. Anyone can be vulnerable. And they are also exposed to uh, trafficking. And also in human trafficking, um, there are different components. Uh, there is sex trafficking, uh, labor trafficking, forced marriage, and other aspects. So we see that. We see that at Aurora House. Is there one survivor story that stayed with you throughout your career? I, I can share a success story, uh, one of the survivors, and uh, she stayed at Aurora House for almost one year, and she moved forward with her life. And there is this powerful statement uh, uh, told by her saying, I was a victim and then I became victorious. And there is uh, the situation she stayed during the trafficking situation. She was not aware of her rights. She told, I thought that was normal. That was the normal way of life. And until I was connected to another agency who then referred her to Aurora House. So this is a powerful statement. People not knowing their rights, being in vulnerable situation, and then the service provided by other agencies and Aurora House to help uh, survivors or victims of human trafficking. What do you say to that one person who is right now suffering right now and doesn't know where to reach out but is, is uh, losing a lot of hope and faith because human trafficking, it's a big issue in our backyard. How do you, um, like why do you think in your personal take it's happening here in our backyard in Canada? The, the reason for human trafficking, we all know, when there is vulnerability, people exploit them. The vulnerability can come to anyone, regardless of age, religion, race, country of origin, country of birth, Canadians, immigrants, it can happen to anyone. And due to vulnerability, people will get exploited. Uh, they will be shown false hope by given gifts, money, uh, employment opportunities, and also relationship, false relationship. The vulnerability also uh, affects a, a person because that's the only source they have. And many times, vulnerable people, they stay in the relationship. They stayed in the situation, thinking that that's the only way to lead their life. At Aurora House, mm -hmm. when uh, uh, clients apply to get a space at Aurora House, they share their story. Not only that, any community agencies, a frontline staff will hear these stories and should be able to make referrals to Aurora House and other agencies who are working in the community. Overall, what's uh, the stats? Because the stats are alarming here in our backyard in Canada. What, what, are, the, what are the numbers like right now? In, um, according to Statistics Canada, the data show around 1,700 cases since 2009. But also note, these are cases which were reported to the police. Uh, and as we all know, there are many cases, many people, victims there, who are unable to report due to stigma, due to, due to fear, due to dependence on their traffickers. So these are police reported cases. And another figure, alarming rate, 97% of the time it's female and it's young female who are trafficked. So these are the numbers. At Aurora House is a small residential, a second stage residential house. 
We had about uh, seven to eight in the past two years residents who have lived and moved out. And I can share a such a story. Last year, three residents, they got permanent housing, they got the support they need, and they moved out. They are in the community. But importantly, they are also still connected to services at Aurora House because that community has been created. They know they have a place to contact. They have a person to contact. If you had to give one message, right, one message to our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau about human trafficking, what's that one message you would like to share? This message is for everyone uh, in the governments, in the municipalities, in the cities, anyone who has the uh, power or resources to help uh, a survivor of uh, human trafficking. The resources we have, um, I, as we all know, need to be increased, more resources, uh, more funding for agencies working in the human trafficking field. Most importantly, education and information to frontline staff, that is important. I, if a settlement a worker who sees the client and the settlement worker, if that person was informed about human trafficking, then they will know where to refer. They will identify the signs and they can talk to the person and then refer them out. So there is this piece, uh, financial resources for education, uh, for information sharing, for training, and also definitely housing facilities for survivors. What's that one last message you want to give to someone out there who's going through such hard times or not? You know, whether they're being, uh, whether they're a prostitute, whether they're an escort, whether they're in that industry uh, that really needs your help. What's that one message you want to share with them? If you feel that you are being exploited, you are being used for benefit of someone else, not only in sex trafficking situation, but also in labor trafficking, in forced marriages, if you need help, speak to a community agency worker settlement worker, a frontline staff, your public health nurse, the family doctor, talk to them, ask for help. And there is help available in different languages. They can access that help. So I would say, ask for help. 